Hi there, my name's Josh and welcome back. Today I want to explain another part of your motherboard and this is a very small part of it, but it's a very important part nonetheless. It is this watch battery, this little IC chip, and this little quartz crystal. This is a quartz crystal, it's encapsulated in like an aluminum tube, but if you push electricity through this crystal, it will vibrate. And all of that creates a clock cycle and we're gonna go into that today. It all starts with the need to create clock cycles in computers. Computers are digital and that requires a big distinction between the high and the low. I think of a sine wave which is, operates in like a square pattern and creating a clock cycle to regularly do that up and down is very important. And it needs to be at a regular interval. So in order to create this consistent rhythm, the computer will push electricity through this crystal and this crystal will vibrate or move at a consistent frequency. And for most crystals out there, it's 32,768 times per second. And you don't have to know that for anything, but just know that it, there's like this standard out there that most computers use. From here, the IC chip that we mentioned earlier, it will, every time that clock happens, every time, you know, every 32,768 times per second, it will add one to the NVRAM. It's just a little it's a storage memory location, and it's a counter that keeps ticking, keeps ticking up, and voila, you have a digital clock. Other circuits will ask that RAM what is what the value is, and then it will translate it into what we would see as something like 1040 p.m. So that little watch battery in there is 3.3 volts. It is only used when your computer is unplugged from the wall. So right now, this motherboard is not plugged into anything. But this time circuit right here, it's still ticking. And it is still adding and it's still keeping track of the time. It's also keeping track of some more things. Your computer has a BIOS or a UFI. And we'll go over that in other videos. And that, that basic input-output system program has to store some values. It has to store what boot device we're going to go to first. If you're overclocking your CPU, we're going to store some values of how to apply voltage to your CPU. If you are changing the clock speed of your RAM, if you are changing what devices are enabled, all of these settings are stored in that same space where your computer keeps the track of time. And it's important to keep those settings in that temporary place. That way, if you ever apply the wrong settings, you can just take out the battery. Or if you ever need to change those settings, it is an easier process to write to RAM instead of reprogramming a read-only chip. So with this motherboard unplugged from the wall, this battery and the time circuit, it's going to keep ticking. And this battery has enough electricity and it has enough power in it to keep that circuit going for about three years if it's unplugged from the wall. Another cool thing about this is that these batteries are replaceable. They're not soldered onto the board. And you'll find that after about seven years, the battery is just no, no good due to the decomposition and just how the battery was made. So it's nice that we can just pop them out and replace them. So I wanna make a distinction. There is your computer's BIOS, which is the basic input output system. And then the BIOS reads from your CMOS RAM. And that's the, that's the place where your computer keeps ticking and it keeps that counter. It's also where you, your BIOS stores those settings. That's in its own little space. This space is about 256 bytes. About 10 of that is used for the watch and timers and um, you can actually set like alarms and stuff in that as well. And the rest of it is generally used for BIOS settings. So you might notice that when your computer's on, it knows what time it is just automatically without ever having to connect to the internet. And I want to briefly explain what happens when your computer figures out what time it is. And this is very brief. You don't have to understand everything in the process, but it is pretty cool. So your operating system will come in from your storage. It'll get loaded into RAM, and then it'll be ran on the CPU. So here is kind of where you'll have an operating system like Windows or OS X. And then... Um, say for Win Windows, for example, will then ask our chipset, hey, what time is it? And then the chipset will ask the 
BIOS, hey, what time is it? And then the BIOS will say, oh, let me go check my memory. And then it will ask this chip, hey, what time is it? And that chip will say, oh, it's 502. And then it will return to the chipset. And then it will return to the CPU. And then Windows will say, oh, it's 502. That must mean it is March 5th at 5.10 p.m. And the idea is it's translating that through tables that are already built into the operating system. So that's a cool little process I wanted to explain to you. And I will say that once your computer is online, it will usually ask the internet server what time is it. And this is a way to keep everything in sync when you're browsing the web. It can create problems when a website thinks that you're 17 minutes behind and it's kind of double checking stuff and it might deny you access if you don't have the right time. So it's a little thing about time right there. Now I've talked a lot about time and how it's kept track on the computer, but these quartz crystals are actually used for a couple other things on your system. Most notably for me, which I find really cool, is that our chipset will have its own clock. Now this crystal might not be 100 megahertz, but this chipset will do a multiple of that and then you will have 100 megahertz clean, steady, everything that is connected to our chipset can work off of that. So the USB, it might do a fraction of that 100 megahertz to talk to other devices, or it might do a multiple to talk to faster devices. There are things like our SATA, which we'll connect our hard drives to. It might use a fractional part of that 100 megahertz to talk back and forth to our hard drives, to our optical drives, etc. So it is cool that this one crystal will determine the clock speed of a lot of different devices on your computer. And another thing that this crystal is going to determine is going to be your clock speed for your CPU. Now I have a computer, it has a Ryzen 3 3200U. That is a processor that is clocked at 3.2 gigahertz. Now if my chipset is 100 megahertz, we will have to multiply that by 32 times to get 3.2 gigahertz. So at a speed of 3.2 gigahertz, it can do stuff really fast, and that's what that processor is made for. The chipset is not made to run that fast, and it doesn't have to run that fast to get what it needs done. So in summary, we talked about the computer time and how it consists of a quartz crystal, a watch battery, and an IC circuit, all working together to create a digital clock that ticks very regularly and adds up, and we can make a time from that. We've also talked about how this creates some storage for our BIOS to store some settings. We've talked about the process about how your, your operating system will get the time from the BIOS. And lastly, we talked about clock multipliers. So my CPU runs at, in the gigahertz range, only because it's a multiple of the, the megahertz range of our chipset. So I hope this video has explained at least one portion of a motherboard and even, even just understanding one small portion at a time will help you look at this whole thing and be like, ah, that makes sense. I can understand, you know, all of these different components. And I thank you all for joining me on this, this adventure as we go and explain every part of this and eventually explain a whole computer system and how it works. So I hope you learned something. Like, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Bye.